Welcome back to The Talking Edge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. Today, we're going to take a look at why cannabis stocks were surging on the end of the week. But first, let's take a look at some gainers and winners. Uh, Got to be kind of careful here because Merrimid was up 54%, but what was that, like 12 cents? So scanning through something more substantial, looking at Charlotte's Web, they were up 24% at 650. Village Farms was up 22%. Acreage Holdings up 18%. And now let's take a look at some of the losers. There's a huge amount of short sellers, meaning people that are betting against uh, companies. And so we'll take a look at that in a moment. But some of the losers from last week were Aurora Cannabis was down 6.5% to $16.05. And then Green Tree Hospitality was down almost 3% at $11.54. And with that huge pop in the market, we saw some short sellers get absolutely hammered. So when you bet against a company uh, that is going to go down and they actually go up, you obviously lose money, right? There's people on both sides of uh, that bidding war uh, from the bid and the ask. So after netting nearly a billion dollars in profits in 2019, cannabis short sellers got off to a strong start in 2020. However, cannabis stocks have taken off in recent weeks and cannabis short sellers are feeling the pain. So what happened? Well, some cannabis short sellers are down $641 million in the month of May and their year-to-date profits are down to just 180 million. So within this portfolio of 240 US and Canadian listed cannabis stocks, currently there's 2.8 billion in total short interest. And in the past week, short sellers have added another 76 million to their positions, meaning they're, they're bearish or they're going against uh, some of these cannabis companies. So um, even with the rise, it even adds more people to the pool betting against it. So to make matters worse for cannabis short sellers, borrowing fees have also been on the rise. So on average, for the 20 most shorted stocks, that's uh, gonna cost them 12.8%, and it's risen to 32%. So cannabis short sellers are now paying more than 2.5 million in daily financing costs to hold that position. Some of the most shorted cannabis stocks being Canopy Growth, GW Pharma, Aurora, Kronos, and Afria. So all those mark-to-market losses coupled with the rising borrowing costs make it prime for a potential short squeeze for those uh, equities. So the short sellers are still chomping out the bid, even with the market increasing, it's even more juicy for them to, to bet against it. So let's take a look at why the market surged last week. Some of the stocks have been on the rise since Thursday of last week, especially the ETF MG Alternative Harvest. They were up 4.2%. The advisor shares, Pure Cannabis ETF, YOLO was up 62 and Cannabis ETF was up 7.1%. And the Amplify Seymour Cannabis ETF was up 5.8%. But if you've seen ours, you already know that we were up 14.20%, not too shabby for a cannabis index. That means we're up 71% year to date on MJ and 129% since inception against Podex. One of the fundamental reasons that's explained for the rise has been the information that came out about cannabis potentially helping with the Rona. Certain strains of cannabis could block ACE2 gateways, which the Rona uses to enter the human body, according to a study conducted by researchers from the University of Leavenbridge in Alberta, Canada. So the scientists suggest it could reduce the chances of contracting it by as much as 80%. So why did the stocks react on Thursday? The answer re- relates to the virality of it, not in terms of health, but rather in terms of the internet. The New York Post article went viral, boosting mini cannabis stocks. But there's another caveat. It seems that CBD is a key ingredient that's allegedly helping with that outbreak. And since the New York Post talked about the general terms of cannabis, those stocks re- reacted to a potential lift in sales across the board. And really, that's high-frequency traders. They're picking up news and they're buying on the news. So that's just kind of creating this FOMO uh, where it's just knocking dominoes over and then the next one buys it. And then if you look at how many people are on Robinhood, that's just gone parabolic since people have been working from home. You've got a lot of the millennials and other people uh, buying some of these these stocks now that they think they're cheap. Uh, They're just not understanding the fundamentals behind why they're so inexpensive. There's an analyst at Piper Sandler who said that the type of press could drive a surge in sales for consumers who may not have yet considered CBD as a health and wellness supplement. I guess that's it. It's the power of PR, either press releases or uh, just getting out there with public relations. Either way, it doesn't really look fundamental or technical, uh, but it could drive demand, could. So 
It's already baked in the cake. We'll see how long it lasts. But with that, we're going to roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid. This is The Talking Hedge. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, or don't, and I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.